Thank you for tuning in to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. I know uh, this is going to appear like it's very old. I just did not want to comment on this uh, bef before while everything was going on because I know everybody's emotions were in a way. And now that everybody's calmer and it's not so much in the news as much, I wanted to talk about the Ukraine. This video might be a little bit long, so sit back, relax, and learn something. First of all, everybody was up in arms and actually supporting Obama and saying, in that, saying that we should go to war against Russia for invading the Ukraine and that we need to support the so-called freedom fighters uh, who threw down their government and they were trying to fight the oligarchs. I'm going to tackle each of those issues. First of all, the C Crimea, which is what's really at stake here, has been a part of Russia for centuries. A lot of people don't, don't even know this. Now, if you look at Russia on the map and then you look at Crimea on the map, you're going to say, well, it's separated by a country. Why in the heck would that be a part of Russia? Well, it was. Why is Alaska a part of the United States? Why is Hawaii a part of the United States? It just is. They, they just are, right? So this goes back to Zarina Catherine, I believe. I believe Catherine, the Zarina of Russia. And it was stolen from, from her. And then... It was taken back and I believe Stalin just up and one day decided to give Crimea to Ukraine. Okay, so it's in Crimea, they're basically Russians. You know, I'm sure you've heard the statistics saying that it's 93% Russian or something like that. They, they speak pure Russian. Uh, well, it belonged to Russia. When Stalin, I believe, that's the person, one of, one of those fascists, uh, up and decided to unhinge Crimea from uh, the uh, USSR. The people in Crimea did not want it, and the people in Ukraine weren't expecting it. So you have that tension there that they, are, they were let go by their own people. Okay, so... Let's fast forward a little bit to the modern era, right? The real modern era. We're going to go back three elections. We have an election on the way. So we have a guy running for election. There's two guys running for election, right? I, I don't know anybody's name. So I'm just going to say John and Joe, right? Or John and Bob. So, John and Bob are running for election, and John wins, and supposedly Bob ousted John, right? Then in the next election, election uh, Bob not only ousted John, or John not only ousted Bob, came back and ousted Bob, but then... Uh, ostracized him from the country well it comes back that there was an uprising called the orange demonstration or something like that they all had orange flags orange shirts and they brought back bob and, and people said the the former election where bob was ousted was not above board and it was it, it was cheating and so forth and so on so bob then comes back through this orange civil demonstration and the international community there was there. Everybody was there watching this election. Bob comes back to the country. I'm sorry, this is this sounds stupid, but you know, this is my reporting. I'm I'm terribly sick. Bob comes back to the country and they hold an election and Bob wins the election completely fair and square, right? So Bob is elected president, prime minister, I don't, I don't know. Bob is elected fair and square. Then you have this uprising that we have, that we just saw, right? 
let's back up a little bit before this uprising. So we have a person who was elected by his countrymen, fair and square. Nothing was wrong. They had tremendous. They had every eye of the world looking at the election. So there is no doubt that the election was completely fair and square, and it is what the country wanted. He got a majority of the votes. I believe he actually won in a landslide. In the meantime, the EU has been trying to court Bob. And Bob said, no, I'm not going to join the EU. If I join the EU, what can you give me? And the EU said, well, we can't give you anything. And what they simply were trying to do was get a hold of Ukraine and then sit bombs at the doorstep of Russia. Russia is the largest trading partner with the Ukraine. Russia is not going to tolerate this and they knew it. And then Obama and his administration also tries to wine and dine the Ukraine. Why? Probably because he was told to. You know, he doesn't do anything on his own. Then they have this civil unrest that we just saw and they ousted Bob or whatever his name is. I'm sure if I saw the name I can't even pronounce it. They ousted him out of office, right? And the news reported it as freedom fighters having a, a civil war and they're trying to fight oppression and that wasn't it at all. Do you know what happened? It was the CIA who went in and wanted a regime change because Bob was not playing ball. And really, the EU doesn't want the Ukraine. They don't want anything. All they want to do is stick it to Russia. Now let's go all the way back into time several centuries ago and I don't know why this is. You would think this would only occur to say some sort of African country but the Western European countries have never wanted Russia to gain any power. power. And this is why they took the Ukraine and Crimea from Russia several centuries ago. They have never wanted Russia to gain power. And it doesn't make sense because normally their alternatives or their ulterior motives is to attack somebody who is not of uh, uh, Caucasian descent. It's white people not wanting other people to have something, right? But for whatever reason, the Western European countries have never wanted Russia to have anything. And this is true if you go look it up, you'll see any time Russia gained a foothold anywhere in the Black Sea, whatever, uh, the Western European powers came against them. I have no idea what the beef really is. It doesn't make sense to me. In my brain, it doesn't make sense to me. To me, you're all European. Uh, the Russian czars were at court in France. France was the center, central power of Europe and the most sophisticated and blah, blah, blah. I know Americans are taught something else that the French are terrible and what have you. But France, for the most part, was the center of power. Great Britain's power didn't come until much, much, much later at the end of Europeans, uh, European power. That's when Great Britain took hold. Uh, Russia was at court in France all the time. Russian artists, uh, Russian uh, musicians, Russians, Russian authors, everything. Uh, they were in France all the time. Why they did not want Russia to have the Crimea, I have no idea. It, it wasn't just Crimea. They didn't want Russia to have anything. And they have systematically tried to thwart Russia. And this whole Ukrainian thing is the same thing. This is why I have said on my Facebook, and please join my Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Shikama Live. You can see all of my comments there. I have said that this is not a fight that we want to be in. It's an unfair fight. It's It has nothing to do with us at all. We are poking Russia with a stick. And Putin is not going to put up with it. 
Crimea actually belongs to Russia and has always belonged to Russia. Always. For centuries. The people in Crimea are Russian. They speak Russian. They're Russians. They can trace their family lineage uh, centuries, centuries and centuries back. They're Russian. Now, the Ukraine was a part of the U USSR before also. So, we're not talking about they're trying to stomp on somebody and the Ukraine, as I said, is the largest, uh, Russia is Ukraine's largest trading partner. And Europe, uh, the EU, gets all of their natural gas from Russia. Germany is one of the largest trading partners with Russia. And Germany has said, no, uh, we're not going to do anything. Uh, the rest of you countries can act a fool if you want to. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to do sanctions against Russia. We're not going to do any of that stuff. We like uh, our business just the way it is. Their prime minister has gone on a uh, Russian television, uh, Russia Today, and said the same exact thing. We're not going to do anything. We love Russia. They're very a okay with us. All of their businesses are a okay with Russia. They are fine. I I have all of these conservative Republican people on my Twitter and they're blowing it up talking trying to support us going to war with Russia or trying to uh, thwart uh, Putin from going into the Crimea and taking the Crimea they, they don't know the history of it the Crimea belongs to Russia it belongs to Russia they are Russian people who live there it's not like he's going into Swaziland and trying to beat up some Africans or something it's it's his own people that are there and all, then I want you to then think back to all of the things that you've read about and heard and saw on the news about Putin doing exercises in this country and that country, blah, 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 of his surrounding countries. A lot of it is people who actually speak Russian and for however many years uh, during the USSR were a part of Russia. A lot of the countries did not want to disband from the USSR. The only country that I know of is Georgia. And that's because Georgia is rich. And Georgia was actually supporting a lot of the poorer countries in the USSR. And when when the when the ball dropped, Georgia was the first, one of the first to leave. Remember uh, that supposedly under communism, everybody's equal. Well, Georgia is actually rich. And they had rich people there, and they had the most richest, fine luxury items that they sell, sold the world over. So when Russia fell, the USSR fell, uh, they were the first to, to leave. But the other countries had no intentions of leaving, but Russia could not keep up uh, the central power governing all of those territories so everything fell it was financially crushing but russia was on the financial outs for a long time well before uh, reagan took office everybody gives him the credit and that was that's not where the credit is due i know a lot of you are going to be oh no 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 uh, reagan did this and that and the other no russia was failing during the kennedy administration it, it it just took this long for them it took that long for them to fail understand that we are crumbling we don't see it yet but everybody's telling you online on YouTube uh, here and there you see an interview with some rich guy and he says the dollar is has gone and we're gonna we're, we're collapsing it's just that we are Russia as during the Kennedy administration it's gonna take some time before the entire thing just completely crumbles around our ears so let's get to the present day, and this is why I really didn't want to uh, talk about this, is because people have not done their homework. They don't understand that that is a part of it, and I believe under Putin, uh, he has completely revamped his finance and the, his economy, the economy of Russia, and they are trying to get the USSR going back the way it was. Why? Because the EU 
is once again attacking Russia. And they're trying to get all of those countries to go back, to not go back, but to come into their sphere of influence when in fact they're a part of the sphere of influence of Russia. This is all a cat and mouse game. And we are trying to give our support to people who were thugs. They drug the duly elected guy out of office. Now you have to you have to really think for a second. Why would a country hold civil and have all this civil unrest, fire, deaths, uh, all of this civil war almost to oust out of office somebody that just a couple of years earlier they elected without any uh, 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 so peaceful without any problem whatsoever uh, lance in a landslide victory it was the CIA who did all of this this is this is wheels within wheels within wheels and really Russia doesn't pose a threat to the dollar Russia doesn't pose a threat to the the euro they are just this is the Middle East but we don't call this the Middle East we don't ever concentrate on this like this this is just like the Middle East the whole unrest in the Middle East this is the exact same example the EU or the Western European countries versus Russia and it has been going on for centuries stop giving your support so willingly to people and I can't believe people would try and support Obama of all the people come on anyway that's your education on the Crimea Ukraine and, and I'm sure there's gonna be a bunch of propagandists uh, typing in comments saying oh you don't know what you're talking about blah 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 I have done my homework I've done my homework, I've done my homework, I've done my homework. Ukraine doesn't want to be a part of the EU. The EU cannot give them anything. The EU is broke. And Germany is not about to go against Russia, which is their one of their favorite trading partners. This is all to poke at Russia by the other European countries. Tell me what you think. Thank you for watching the Shigama Live Show.